So hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will build another SFFPC using this oh mangle. Using this Velka 3. The Velka 3 is a super compact case, so hardware compatibility is tight. For the CPU cooler, the max height is just 37 mm, meaning low profile coolers only. For the GPU, it supports two slot cards up to 179 mm long. For memory, your RAM sticks must be 42 mm or shorter to fit. It uses a Flex ATX power supply with a max length of 150mm. For storage, it supports a 1 2.5-inch drive and for the motherboard, of course, it uses a standard mini ITX motherboard. As for the case fans, well, there aren't any. It relies mostly on passive air cooling. Price-wise, the case cost $160 without a riser. If you need a PCIe 4 riser, that's another $90 plus $20 shipping fee. As you can see, it came from Philippine Post Office and they opened it up for me, which is not a appreciated but it's fine it's fine it's fine because i didn't pay any customs taxes so the box is pretty much plain this is the case itself it has been really a long while since i can put a case that can fit my camera here i also bought a riser it's a 29 centimeter pcie gen 4 riser it's basically a normal riser this is the case itself there's some weird things here like this I'm not sure if I missed one screw or there's a misalignment. Maybe because it can fit the flex PSU here and then I'll screw the flex PSU to secure this side panel. We'll see later. The case is pretty basic. It has a power button, cut out for the GPU, cut out for the motherboard, and cut out for the flex PSU. That's it. There's an accessory box which contains screws and i think it's for the gpu baffle here and this one are feet which you have to stick i guess anyway we'll see those there's no included manual nothing so you have to go online to check the manual you can download the manual from their website and i hope it's pretty much complete so first is to disassemble the case let's remove this screw so the bottom part has a nut there <laughs> problem is it's on the left side so yeah, there are a few more screws. There are two screws at the bottom, two screws at the top. So it's currently being held. Let me try to remove this. So, okay, that released the front panel. So the side panel is secured by four screws, two on each side. There are a few more screws, two here. One, two, three, four here, five. Remove the two screws from the motherboard side. Even at this point, you can't really mount your motherboard, especially if it has a tall I.O. shield. Well, the I.O. shield is standard size. So especially if you have tall shroud here, I guess. Maybe you can mount it directly if the I.O. shield isn't pre-installed. Anyway, a few more screws. There's one more screw here at the back. So the tray is finally out. So as for the PSU, I'll be using this FSP Flex Guru Pro 500 watts power supply. This isn't the ideal PSU for this case because it isn't modular. Yeah, it's like this. So you can secure it by using two screws here. For the bottom left, don't secure it first because that's where the side panel goes in. And of course this one as well. That's where the side panel will go in later. And just based on the count. So this is the 6mm round screw. That's what I will use for the PSU. Again, I just need two. So let's set this aside for now. And then tackle the motherboard. As for the motherboard, I'll be using the usual B650E-I from ASUS. The processor is a Ryzen 7 7800X3D. RAM is a G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo. 32GB, 6000 mega transfer, CL30 RAM. So the only compatible cooler to the VEL case are just a few. One is the ID Cooling IS30. Second is the Noctua NHL9A-AM5. Third is the Johnsbo HP400. And this is the last one, which is the AXP90-X36. So the problem with this is that it's not really compatible with AM5. It's compatible with the M4, but not really with the M5. So I think I have a solution for that. So I have this accessories package from EXP90-X53, which I will try. I'm not sure if this will go well. So actually by right, you can just plug this directly and then just screw it from the back side. So technically, this EXP90-X36 is already compatible. So just need to lock this in place. So I'll try a few things. I'm wondering if I need the shorter screw. So I'll try to replace this with a shorter screw which I got from the EXP90-X53. So just hand screw this to the cooler. I think I'll mount it this way. Oh yeah, looks better. This is way better because there's no protruding screws. So to remove, I think I need to do this 
then uh, pull it's hard to remove though so the problem is that it will become really stuck so i think i took around good five minutes and, and some sweat <laughs> uh, let's apply thermal paste then try again unscrew the things first then use this uh, nut to tighten it looks good what's missing is to plug the fan to the cpu fan header which is this one and yeah it's time to put this to the case so anyway mount the motherboard here anyway i need four of this just screw the motherboard to the spine so one thing that you'll notice in this build is that i didn't pre-plug the cpu 8 pin power connector the reason is this it's not modular so you can only do that if it's modular next is the riser cable so i have to plug this here i think i saw this in linus tech tips already then you have to do it like so then fold it like so so i'm wondering if you can actually use a dual reverse riser here and for the sake of this video i will try so this is a normal dual reverse riser it can actually fit a double reverse riser so i'm not really sure if you really need to buy the riser even this anyway i bought the riser already anyway back to regular programming plug the riser to the motherboard use the same motherboard screw now it's time to plug the GPU. So as for the GPU, I'll be using this Zotac RTX 4060 solo. Just right, just right. Oh, it's time to screw this now. The question is if I plug this now, do I get the chance to plug the motherboard cables? Okay, so they didn't mention when to install the cables. <laughs> I believe now is the right time. This might be too tight later on. This for the CPU. I guess I'll remove the GPU first. Also isn't locked. Then plug this here. Anyway, plug first this guy. And then plug it here. Slide the spine back to the case. Yep, aligned already. I screwed the top part of the case first. So I guess you'll put it here. Based on the manual, you can put an SSD drive here or a 2.5 inch drive. This is a cable management nightmare so it's also time to use this to secure the gpu more of these round screws uh, just screw this one then lastly this one here and the gpu is finally secure now it's time to put back everything screw the right side to the case plug the power switch to the motherboard and then screw the left side to the case let's try to mash this thing here oh oh it's crooked I got it wrong, man. So I guess it's the bottom one and then the top one as well. So this one is wrong as well. So I think it's best to lock the other side as well. And I guess I'll use the PSU screw for this part and this part as well. Last one, the one that I hope will fit. I think just smash it together. It's a very, 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 very small case. It's quite heavy though, but very compact there you go so put feet here okay so we need to put the feet because your flex psu will suffocate if you don't put any feet no the feet is very low and then there's not much config so we'll try two configs one intake and one exhaust for here yeah time to test this while testing the case temps everything ran fine during cinebench r24 but when i tried fa15 benchmark the system got loud because the side panel was pressing against the gpu this created a noise and impacted temperatures the gpu hit 90 degrees celsius maybe because it was being hit by the fan or due to the cables blocking its airflow because of that i didn't continue testing fa15 without an offset on the gpu side i also removed some cables blocking the gpu's airflow at the front of the case which probably helped but I didn't test further. Anyway, as for the temps in Cinebench R24 after a 30-minute benchmark, the CPU in intake mode averaged at 89.99 degrees Celsius. Switching to exhaust mode, it was slightly lower at 89.66 degrees Celsius. But the difference wasn't just about temperature. The clock speed dropped from 4.4 GHz in intake mode to 3.9 GHz in exhaust mode, which also impacted Cinebench scores falling below 1000. For FA15 at 4K after 30 minutes, 
the CPU temps averaged at 73.1 degrees Celsius. With the offset applied on the CPU side, it improved slightly to 72.3 degrees Celsius, just 0.87 degrees Celsius lower. I think this is within margin of error. However, in exhaust mode without an offset, the CPU ran much hotter, averaging at 85 degrees Celsius. As for the GPU temps, in intake mode, it averaged at 73.6 degrees Celsius. Applying the CPU side offset made it just 0.5 degrees Celsius cooler. But again, that's just likely within the margin of error. On the other hand, configuring the CPU cooler as exhaust made a much bigger difference, dropping GPU tests by 3 degrees Celsius, down to 70.19 degrees Celsius on average. As for my comments on performance, this is the hottest result I've seen, which makes sense. The cooler is small and just couldn't keep up with the 7800X3D. In my opinion, that's a case limitation. I think 65W TDP CPUs should be the ideal choice for this case. The GPU stayed within the operating temps, but this is probably the hottest GPU. GPU I'd recommend in this case, somewhere around 120 watts TDP. For configuration, the best balance seems to be running the CPU cooler in intake mode. In exhaust mode, the CPU gets toasty since it ends up vacuuming all the heat from the components. For buyers, make sure not to block your GPU airflow. The GPU that fit in this case typically have horizontal fin stacks, meaning airflow is directed towards the front of the case, which is sadly blocked as well. For VEL case, I think having an optional mesh front panel would be interesting as it would provide a pathway for GPU exhaust and help with overall airflow. An optional 40mm fan mount at the front would be even more interesting but that kind of defeats the backpack friendly size so I'd hold back on that idea. As for my combined comments to Velcase and tips to buyers, first Velka 3 is compatible with double reverse risers. If you visit the Velka 3 page, then the compatibility list tab and open the graphics card and PCIe riser cable compatibility list, you will see that Velcase officially supports 9 19 plus centimeter double reverse riser. Double reverse risers are also more affordable, typically costing around $50 compared to Velke's $90 riser. If you're looking to save money, do consider a double reverse riser. Also, if you have an 18.5 centimeter double reverse riser and it doesn't fit, you can route the riser between the motherboard and the spine to get the extra length needed for the fold. However, while this is documented on the compatibility page, if you go back to the Velka 3 page and scroll down to the hardware compatibility section, there's no mention of double double reverse riser support and the manual doesn't mention it either. To Velcase, I suggest making this information consistent across all pages to avoid confusion. Since there's already a dedicated compatibility page, you could even opt to remove the text from the manual and Velka 3 page and just provide a link to compatibility list instead. Next, I made a mistake in my build but it turns out it was actually a feature of Velka 3, a 5mm optional offset. Velcase should highlight this feature more clearly in my opinion. I understand that it's meant for quieter operations and increased internal clearances, but that's all the manual says. Honestly, I didn't even realize what it meant until my post-build analysis. The manual isn't clear and the website barely mentions this increased compatibility. I think this deserves more details on what this means. Next is about side panel screws. On one hand, hiding them behind the front panel does make the case look cleaner and more aesthetically pleasing. On the other hand, for maintenance, I'd have to remove four screws to take off the front panel before I can even remove move a side panel. And if I have a third hand, the 5mm offset would work differently if screws were exposed. You'd actually need standoffs for the offset to function properly. So I think Velcase did it right. Overall, I like the case for its portability. The only issue for me is the price. I do think it is expensive, but at the same time, it's a niche product. So far, I haven't seen a direct competitor that matches this backpack-friendly small form factor case. I mean, there's the Inwin Shopa, which is even smaller, but it doesn't support a discrete GPU. And again, to read rate, I'd recommend a 65 watt TDP CPU and for the GPU, something like the RTX 4060 with a 115 to 120 watt TDP would be ideal for this case. Anyway, that's it for this video. Do let me know in the comments on what you think. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing, SFF builds, and benchmarks. Bye!